I'm sure you've heard a lot about how to start a sales call, but do you know the best way to end a sales call and close it? Believe it or not, there are better ways than others. The step that you are missing is literally costing your company millions. So I'm gonna walk you through this, and if you've ever struggled with sales calls, I feel your pain. When I first started out in selling many moons ago, many years ago, I remember just being petrified to even pick up the phone, much less try to close a sale. And closing a sale, it can feel awkward, it can feel like you're taking people's money, right? Like there's many things that we can project onto that moment. When the truth is, you really aren't serving a client or a customer if you don't give them the opportunity to make a decision. So one of the things you wanna do first is start to shift how you see a sales close and the sales process. And not look at it as it's something I'm doing to someone. Look at it as something that you're doing for someone because you're giving them the opportunity to say yes. You're giving them the opportunity to say yes to a better life or the opportunity to say yes to growing their business. And that's really profound. So just think about that for a moment. Like what would happen for you if you shifted how you see sales? If you stopped thinking about, oh, this is all about me and I'm gonna get rejected and this just feels awkward, instead put all of your attention and focus on the person in front of you and focused on, again, the difference you could make for them. So when you're sitting with someone or you're on the phone, wrapping up a sales conversation, you get to that point where it's time for them to make a decision. What most people miss are the steps before that. When you open up a sales call correctly or a sales conversation correctly, the rest of it just works itself out and makes it really easy for you to get a yes and no or a next step on the calendar. So when you start your sales conversation, you wanna begin by asking open-ended questions. And you wanna start with open-ended pain-related questions because you wanna understand what they're struggling with right now. In my world, I might ask someone about their business challenges. Like what are your top two business challenges right now? Or what are the top two things that you're really struggling with right now? I wanna understand what they're struggling with. And then they're gonna share those things with me. And as they're sharing them, I'm thinking, can what we offer really help them? Can it really support them? And that's what you wanna be thinking as well. Like as they answer the questions, does your product or service really help them? And if it does, then I'd keep going because then I would ask them goal-related questions, meaning open-ended questions where they can share their, their goals and what they really desire. So I might ask something like, what are the top two biggest goals that you can think of for your business this year? Because now I've seen what they don't want, like what the pain is, what they're struggling with. And then I can see what they do want, what the goal is or the goals are. And what I'm looking for is what is the gap in between? And the question is, does my product or service or does your product or service solve the solution that gets them from the pain to the solution that they're looking for? Does that get them there? And if I can see that it does, then I'm going to move into giving them an opportunity to choose. Because you, you owe it to this prospect who's taken time to sit in front of you. You owe it to them to give them the opportunity to choose something different in their business or in their life. They get to choose the next step. They are in the driver's seat. It's not about you, it's about them choosing. Once you've gotten, you know, you've gathered all the information about what they don't want and what they do want, then you can tell them very concisely about your solutions, your products or your services. Remember, you don't wanna overwhelm someone because a confused person never buys. Too many choices, too much confusion, I'm not going to buy. So you wanna narrow it down to two or three solutions for them, or two or three products or services, or two or three packages. And for some of you, maybe it's just two. And for some of you, it might just be one thing, one option for them, but you're gonna explain what that option is. It is nice, it's easier to close if you can give them at least two options. Give them the two options, and then you simply say, which one of these options is going to work best for you? One of two things is going to happen here. Either they choose, I'd like this option, and you know that the sale is pretty much closed, so this is a clear yes, right? You get a clear yes, and then, then you move into the process of asking them how they're going to pay. It's very simple. Maybe they need to sign a contract. Maybe they can just pay for what you have over the phone. Super easy. Again, they're still in the driver's seat. They get to choose. The other thing that can happen, is you get a clear no. So a clear yes or a clear no. Now usually most people think that that's it. I'm either gonna get a clear yes or a clear no. If it's a clear no, like a clear no, and you also are very clear on the fact that this isn't, this isn't a fit for them, that's okay. At that point you can just say, 
you know, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to hear more about this product or more about this service. If there's any other way I can serve you, please stay in touch, right? Clear no, we're complete. What most people miss, and this is the one that's literally costing your company millions of dollars. Most people miss the other option. So if it's not a yes and it's not a no, then my question is what's the objection? What's holding them back? Because there's something in the middle and there are some, some people in the world, you know, some personality types who really need to process what you're saying, or maybe they have a business partner and you didn't realize they had a business partner or they would have been there. So maybe there's a business partner that you need to talk to, right? And so they, or that they need to talk to, to make a decision. There's an in-between there. We're not sure we're kind of caught in objection land and this is where you can bring in millions of dollars into your company because you simply ask a question. So for example, let's say they say, I need to talk to my business partner. You can say, Oh, great. Totally understand. And it would be super wise for you to, you know, talk to your business partner because you just want to acknowledge what's true. What is it? They need to talk to their business partner. And then you ask another question. You ask, when do you think you'll be able to talk to your business partner? They say, I think I'll be able to talk to them tomorrow morning. Awesome. Great. Tomorrow morning, not two weeks from now, not a month from now. And then you immediately say, all right, so if you're able to talk to your business partner tomorrow morning, could we put a time to connect on the calendar at say 10 or 11 tomorrow morning, which would work best for you? So again, they're still in the driver's seat. They get to choose another time and you get to put it on the calendar. So you either get a clear crystal clear. Yes. They're buying today a crystal clear. No, it's not a fit and that's okay. Or, a next step on the calendar. So you know, when you're going to talk to them next. Now with this next step, what can be tricky is, is if we let them direct, or if we just kind of leave it open ended, or we say, you know, when, when do you think you'll talk to your business partner? Oh, maybe sometime next week. Okay, great. Well, I'll give you a call next week. That's what most people say rather than again, walking through the process to get a clear date and a clear time of when we're going to talk, because when you do that, <laughs> then you know that that conversation is going to continue. Plus, by giving them an, that option, that is also a clear buying signal that they still want to move forward with you. So you put that time on the calendar. And I also, I also recommend that you, you send, you know, a calendar invite so that they can confirm so that it will also go on your calendar and their calendar. So you both know when you're going to be connecting and how you're going to be connecting. When you do that, when you get, again, when you get that next step on the calendar, I'm telling you, you will add thousands and hundreds of thousands. And for some of you, millions of dollars of revenue back into your company. All right. So I love this topic and I'm so glad we got to talk about how to end a sales call and close it. I hope that you found these tips to be really valuable because I can tell you when you start to practice these tips, they will bring more and more money into your company. Again, you want to help your client make a decision. So you're going to ask open-ended questions, pain related, goal related, and then you're going to offer them two to three options that they can choose from two to three, either packages, products, services, whatever it is. And then you're going to say, which one works best for you. And then finally, if you don't get a clear yes, or you don't get a clear no and you get a little bit of ambivalence and they need to talk to someone or there's some other objection. If you can handle the objection in that moment and move back to closing the sale. If you can't put a next step on the calendar. If you enjoyed today's video, I want to invite you to watch the next one because we're going to talk about the best way to start sales calls. And also remember your two X is waiting for you too.